Elon Musk has confirmed that Tesla is making great progress with the Model 2, and in contrast, Lars Moravi also said that the manufacturer will also go into mass production of the Tesla Semi in 2024. If everything goes according to plan, both products will launch this year, but more specifically, it won't be a Tesla Semi Day cab like what PepsiCo's fleet is running. Instead, we'll have a rig inspired by a mobile home with sleeper and many major tweaks. After the update, drivers will be allowed to drive long distances overnight and not worry about range because the Tesla Semi has achieved 1,076 miles in real-world testing. So how will the Tesla Semi shake up the transportation industry with its new tweaks? And will the next version be a boom or a bust? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. In January of 2023, Tesla held a special event to announce plans to expand Gigafactory Nevada, including not only new space to provide 4680 batteries, but also space to mass-produce Tesla semi-trucks. However, as of the end of November of 2023, according to information from Henrik Zane's post on X, the Gigafactory Nevada expansion project has not yet started and is on hold. Still, the suspension of the factory expansion project does not mean that Tesla will not be able to mass produce semi trucks in 2024. So, what can Tesla do for the big rig in 2024? There are sources from insiders saying that Tesla is preparing to build a separate production facility next to the current factory to mass produce Tesla semis. However, it is unclear whether this is just a temporary factory built quickly or a long term strategy that marks a change in Tesla's production plans. Up until now, with 2024 having many big goals, Tesla still does not have a large-scale production factory, only a pilot with low output. However, according to what Moravi said, Tesla will produce in large quantities, and we are thinking the previously mentioned sleeper semi is what Giga Nevada is developing. Even crazier still is that it can surpass the limit to become a mobile home truck Tesla. One thing we must acknowledge is that the price of the 2024 Tesla Semi will be similar to the Cybertruck, representing a significant increase compared to the current available day cab version. The current price has been confirmed at 250,000 US dollars, as a Sacramento City official noted that the county has paid for 18 out of 21 Tesla Semis used at PepsiCo's South Sacramento bottling plant, with a sponsorship funding a funding of four and a half million dollars. It's vast different from what we were presented with during the semi's debut in late 2017 when Tesla estimated that the 300 mile range version of the truck would be priced at 150,000 and the 500 mile variant would come in at 180,000. However, Tesla customers have accepted this price transformation as it has at least paralleled the trend seen with the Cybertruck. Returning to the concept of a mobile home design for the semi, Tesla may integrate additional features such as a bed and and two or three small rooms on the truck, serving as a bathroom, restroom, or dining area by extending the cabin towards the rear. Currently, the driver's cabin area alone has a space of about three by seven feet with a height convenience for a person who is six foot tall to walk around or stretch, and these standards can be modified to accommodate the new design without much difficulty. As we know, the driver's seat positioned in the center of the Tesla Semi is a unique highlight of the truck, as there are few few manufacturers worldwide with a similar concept. However, it is also the top controversial factor of this vehicle, with many opinions suggesting that this position makes it difficult to observe the rear and sides of the truck. In the new version, with a complete interior redesign of up to 50%, the manufacturer's decision to change the driver's seat position becomes understandable. Thus, Tesla will move the driver's seat to the left, similar to conventional trucks, and add an additional co-driver seat. When transporting goods cross-country, the truck cabin serves as the driver's home away from home and needs to provide as many amenities as possible. For instance, modern sleeper cabs from truck manufacturers like Freightliner, Peterbilt, and Kenworth come equipped with conveniences such as refrigerators, microwaves, TVs, and storage cabinets to ensure the driver feels as comfortable as possible. Now, numerous concept drawings of the Tesla Semi-Mobile Home suggest a versatile 
versatile truck, and the next step is to await information from Tesla. However, at least we can be 99.9999999999% sure that a sleeper cabin will be added to the new version. On the flip side, when the mobile home design is applied to the drilling rig, it applies that its weight will increase significantly compared to the current 26,000 pounds. As the weight increases, the cargo carrying capacity will decrease. For example, if the semi-truck's weight is modified to 32,000 pounds, the towing or payload capacity for both the tractor and the cargo would be 48,000. With a total of 80,000 pounds, an efficient rating for an electric truck like the semi. Although electric trucks are prioritized with an additional 2,000 pounds for the total weight, they should not be loaded to the maximum, as it could lead to overloading the battery pack and rapid deterioration. Therefore, even PepsiCo rarely utilizes the maximum load of 82,000 pounds when using the big rig for 12 hours a day. Similar to the Cybertruck, the range may also be adjusted lower when the truck's weight increases. Figures like 500 miles or 600 are less likely to be sustained for the 2024 version due to reasons similar to those affecting the Cybertruck. Challenges in battery production steps, coupled with the substantial weight of the Tesla Semi's battery pack, which is equivalent to 10 Model S battery packs and weighing up to 11,000 pounds, present significant hurdles. Even if these are not the newer 4680 cells, the issue still lies in the battery pack assembly and integration. It's noteworthy that the Tesla Semi is largely assembled manually since Tesla currently doesn't have a dedicated production line for this truck. This is also why, in 2023, the manufacturer remained relatively stagnant at a production quantity of 100 units. All in all, whether Tesla makes modifications or adjustments to the big rig in any aspect, it's eagerly awaited because, at the very least, it continues to prove that the Semi is not a mere stock pump or a production nightmare. Alongside the Model 2, the 2024 Semi from Tesla is a factor that could shape a promising 2024. Rest assured that even if the specifications are scaled down, it remains the leading electric truck in the market. But how will the Semi lead the electric truck lineup in the real world? Let's not worry about the 2024 version for now and take a look back at the current day cab 2023 version to see how the Tesla Semi outperforms any of its competitors on the market, even newly launched truck models. It's no longer news that the Semi boasts an operating range of up to 500 miles between charges due to its energy consumption of around 2 kilowatt hours, sometimes as low as 1.7, as confirmed by Musk. This is also accurate as the 500 mile estimate is calculated when the drilling rig has a total weight of 82,000 pounds, and under no load conditions, it can fully cover 600 miles on a single charge. The relatively low energy consumption of the Semi is among the lowest in the electric trucks available in North America. For example, the Nikola Trey consumes 2.3 kilowatt hours per mile, while the Kenworth T680E and the Peterbilt 579 have higher figures, reaching up to 2.64 kilowatt hours per mile. Even the Freightliner E Cascadia is not more outstanding in this aspect. This factor contributes significantly to the Tesla Semi's standout position compared to its competitors. We believe that with the capability to cover 1,076 miles in a day, as demonstrated by the drilling rig, there is no reason to deny its achievement. It's not inferior to the range of a diesel truck, especially when considering fuel efficiency. The big rig will indeed achieve significant savings. The semi effectively employs a tri-motor drivetrain similar to the one found in the Model S Plaid, but with slight modifications, configured in a rearward orientation. The front motor of the Model S drives the rear axle of the semi, functioning as a highway drive unit, while the dual rear motors from the Plaid are mounted on the middle axle of the semi. These motors feature a clutch system akin to Rivian's, enabling their use for acceleration and disengaging once at speed to enhance efficiency. Looking at the best-selling truck model in the US, the Freightliner Cascadia, which has a baseline power of 340 horsepower and the figure triples to 1,050, we can confidently say that the Tesla Semi aligns well with the 1,020 horsepower of the Model S and X Plaid and possibly even its torque of 1,050 pound-feet. It's worth noting that the Tesla Semi can go up to 1,500 horsepower, but the manufacturer has reduced it to protect tire durability. As for the rig's battery, logic suggests we should reconsider the Plaid battery 
battery. Some PepsiCo Tesla Semi drivers said the truck has a 1000 kilowatt hour battery pack or one megawatt hour, equivalent to 10 Plaid battery packs connected in series. That's consistent with Tesla's claim of a 500 mile range and company chief Elon Musk's claim of using less than two kilowatt hours per mile of operation. In real world usage, Frito-Lay drivers have informed us that the routes for the semi are much shorter. A typical day for them might involve leaving Modesto in the morning with a load of potato chips and other goods that are assuredly lighter than the combined weight of the truck, totaling 82,000 pounds. They then travel a circuit to places like San Jose or Concord, both approximately 85 miles away. On the other hand, the North American Council for Freight Efficiency, or NACFE, which focuses on efficient transportation, conducted a study on 10 electric fleets and their charging capabilities. It affirmed Tesla's dominance in charging efficiency among heavy-duty trucks. As we know, the semi boasts a fast charging capability from 0 to 70% in just half an hour. So what can Tesla do to quickly keep up with its goal of 50,000 semis per year? To complete the goal of 50,000 units from this year as Musk promised is something that we dare to assert that Tesla is not capable of doing. Considering models that are smaller and have a separate production line like Cybertruck, the goal of 50,000 is not feasible. In the previous episode, we mentioned the reasons why Tesla fell into production HE double hockey sticks, which mainly stem from the production location, assembly process, and battery technology. If the three core factors are thoroughly resolved, then at least the target can be completed as soon as the year 2026. As mentioned before, the expansion of the current Giga Nevada area is still a big question mark. Even if it were to be expanded, the number of 5,000 units would be too much for a small factory. So bringing the Tesla Semi to be assembled at a new factory like Fremont or Texas is something that Tesla engineers would consider arranging to ensure progress for 2024 and Musk's goal of 50,000 units. Next is the complex assembly process that requires manual labor for the rig. Tesla Semi is Tesla's most difficult EV to produce, including thousands of large and small components and requiring highly expensive experienced assemblers. Unlike other models that are automated with robotic arms, drilling rigs are completed more with human hands. So the requirement for experienced human resources is difficult at the present time. So we hope that Tesla should prioritize an automated process for the big rig, even though we know it requires huge time and cost. For example, a 30,000 ton gigapress for Tesla Semi. <laughs> Kidding, of course. Finally, the battery technology we have not yet confirmed whether this 1,000 kilowatt hour battery pack is 2170 or lithium iron phosphate, but creating a battery pack with such a huge capacity in size, huh, we still can't imagine the quantity of battery cells that Tesla used. To make it easier to imagine, Cybertruck's 123 kilowatt hour battery pack includes a combination of 1360 and 4680 cells, and that's easy for us to know how a 1000 kilowatt hour battery pack must be invested. I think you probably get the idea at this point. So Tesla reducing the battery pack size is something they could do to achieve higher volumes for 2024, which is a shame since the 4680 rig miracle seems to be something of fantasy. The company can begin using 4680 cells for the semi as production increases and stabilizes right around 2027. Part of the more than 3.6 billion US dollar investment will also be used to hire on 3,000 new employees. Now why might Matt Black not be suitable for the semi? We often associate the Tesla semi when appears Tesla semi when it appears on North American roads with its distinctive white color combined with the prototype design design, or perhaps the more eye-catching Pepsi blue accents or the bright red lights of snack packages bright red hues of snack packages. However, few are aware of the black color option for the Tesla Semi, and there are at least three major reasons why this color is not widely popular. Firstly, black has the ability to absorb high temperatures, absorbing up to 90 to 95% of the light spectrum and converting it into, you guessed it, heat. This can increase the surface temperature of the vehicle and pose a challenge for the cooling system. Although the Semi is equipped with a powerful cooling system, black is not encouraged to avoid significant impact on heat dissipation. 
Secondly, the color black makes decoration or painting more challenging if companies want to place brand logos or advertising messages. Sunlight can cause black to fade more quickly than other colors, making the vehicle appear more worn out in a shorter amount of time. And lastly, it poses difficulties in, re in recognizing the vehicle at night, increasing the risk of collisions. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that black minimizes the driver's ability to identify the vehicle, posing a particular particular danger when moving in low light conditions. Overall, choosing the color for the Tesla Semi also implies decisions about performance and advertising, posing challenges and considerations that transport companies, transport companies need to weigh, no pun intended, when putting the vehicles into use. However, it is acknowledged that the black color option adds a distinctive and suave appearance to the rare and unique design of the Semi. Thanks to its superior technology, Tesla has undoubtedly received a significant number of orders for its semi option, semi line, and customer expectations are becoming increasingly eagerly anticipated. PepsiCo has pre ordered 100 units, while Cisco and Enhauser Bush have reserved 50 and 40 units, respectively. Walmart is currently awaiting a delivery of 130, and Pride Group Enterprises has placed an order for 150, announcing that they made reservations and began preparing infrastructure for these vehicles back in November of 2020. According to a reliable source, Source from Reuters, published on December 16th of 2023, PepsiCo plans to put 100 Tesla semis into operation by 2023, or so they thought. Currently, they only have 36 units for the company. These trucks will be used for delivery services to key partners, such as Walmart and Kroger. According to the announcement, PepsiCo anticipates deploying, anticipates deploying 15 units from Modesto and 21 units from Sacramento, although there is no detailed information on other locations. This is just a small part of the electric truck deployment strategy with plans to first expand their use in the central United States, followed by the East Coast. The current Tesla truck cabin features only a few basic amenities, such as a wireless charging pad, coat hooks, and a rear passenger seat with relatively few highlights. However, it's worth noting that this configuration is designed for day cab operations, meaning it may not be suitable for extended multi-day trips. Although the current Tesla Semi does not feature a standard sleeper cabin for the driver, this does not preclude future changes. Musk's prediction of producing 50,000 semis this year seems to be a long-term goal, more like. The semi makes an impression in various ways. It's fast, efficient, and capable of carrying enough weight to compete with diesel-powered trucks. However, it's not the perfect truck for every transportation scenario. With a relatively simple interior and a maximum range of 500 miles, the semi is suitable for regional transportation rather than long-haul cross-country trips. Trips. Currently, those scenarios will likely remain the domain of diesel-powered vehicles. So, what enhancements are you expecting for the drill rig update this year, and what are your thoughts on the future of the electric transportation industry as the trend toward clean energy is increasingly encouraged worldwide to minimize CO2 emissions? We truly value your contribution to the conversation, so let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. We hope this video provided you with a sense of relaxation. If it resonated with you, kindly show your support by liking the video and joining the Tesla Car World family through subscribing to our channel. Also, be sure you don't miss any of our fantastic content by hitting that bell icon. Your feedback and time are immensely appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon. Until then, stay safe and enjoy life by 2024's end. But currently, they only have 36 units for the company. These trucks will be used for delivery services to key partners such as Walmart and Kroger. I think I messed up.